everybody, my name is Eileen Davis and today I am joining you from the Centre to commemorate the immigrant or Inuk Kriebenkorn the Emrika in the coastal village of Karna on the wild Atlantic Way uh, in County Galway. Um, I'm delighted to be part of this conference organised by Galway County Council and I will talk and speak on the theme of immigration and the connections that we have now forged between the various groups who would have left Connemara and uh, the general area of County Galway and Mayo uh, down through the decades, going back to about 1823 or thereabouts where records can be found. So um, basically decades of immigration and outward migration um, has led to the evaporation and the fragmentation of the population of Erisamnuk, which is the region of Karna and Kilkerran in the major Connemara Gaelic region of County Galway. Meaning Windy Peninsula, Erisandic has seen its people spread on the winds of time, especially to the United Kingdom and America, although a local census conducted in 2013 by Inuk Cleveland Connor America and uh, Susan O'Connor shows that current living population of the area's immigrants can be found worldwide. The power of the landlords and their ability to move people at their will to populate their properties in other parts of Connemara adds further confusion to the quest for family origin that the descendants of Harrisonic immigrants face. Blake, a landlord in the area, populated the island of Inishni, which is off Ralstone, after the famine, with people from the Harrisonic region and likewise moved people north to Solrook in the Galway Mayo border area. Assisted immigrant packages for people to go to the American Midwest in the 1870s and 1880s saw whole families disappear from the Connemara landscape. With no idea of where they were going and not very sure of where they had left, many families lost contact with their immigrant members. In those years, with famine, destitution and dependency on the whim of a ruling class, survival was the goal. All other considerations were ignored. As time moved on and literacy was improved, uh, later immigrants from Erisan and elsewhere were better able to connect with home. They sent money, parcels and tickets to their siblings. This is called chain immigration, where many people of, or many descendants of the same family would go to the same area down through the generations. This saw the traditional destinations of Portland, Maine, Boston, Chicago, Pennsylvania and New York increase their standing Connemara populations. Men and women to a lesser degree engaged in seasonal immigration and migration, going to work harvesting the sugar beet crop in England, going to East Galway likewise to help with um, seasonal work. This kept the families afloat. With the work taking part in the lean times of the Connemara winter, some of those immigrants stayed on in England. And as with human nature everywhere, they had family, and in some cases children were born outside of a marriage union. The realisation of the need to provide a focal point to commemorate the immigrant came about because of such activities as a magazine that is published here in Connemara, in Erisandic, um, for the past 30 years, this magazine would have kept the immigrant population in contact with the home population and it gradually became apparent that there was a need for an actual physical focal point for people to um, focus on. From that, Inuit Creven Pond Emrica was built by um, a voluntary community group called Forum Erisanic, but it's built on behalf of the local community and on, and on behalf of the immigrant population worldwide. In 2019, Mary Mangan and the Heritage Office of Galway County Council joined with Uther Russell Gale to host a conference in Inuit Creven Pond Emrica, which is the centre built here. The conference had as its focal point the assisted immigrant packages of James Hacktook, Dr. Gerard Moran, Catherine Villiers Tuckle, and others were speakers at that event. Antoinette Leiden of Octorard and Leslie Thomas of Minnesota took part also. 
Visiting in the audience were people from the Irish Centre in Portland, Maine, people from Boston and San Diego, as well as New York and Chicago, and not to forget London, England and Scotland. Many in attendance were members of heritage clubs and uh, groups throughout County Galway. Geraldine Mills was a potent residence and her work, Bone Road, brought the grim reality of hardship to an audience that were learning new facts as to how and why their families had become displaced and oftentimes lost to one another. Rosemary Geraghty gave an amazing account of immigration from Black South Bay and Ackle. Her work is particularly inspiring, professionally documenting the passenger lists and any other information she has received or researched. Rosemary is an inspiration and she, she does Trojan work at very much alone and by herself in North Mayo. Arising from that conference, many connections have been forged and are being nurtured. For instance, Carla Immigrant Centre with the Irish Centre in Portland, Maine. The connections between those who immigrated to Minnesota are being strengthened with regular meetings between people. Thomas Roach, Michael Carlson, Colleen Kerr, plus all those with whom we were in contact with are now all part of the Minnesota Descendants Group who are connected because of a serendipitous meeting in Carna with Leslie Thomas, brought about by Antoinette Leiden. Recently, we have made contact with the Irish community in St. John's, Newfoundland, thanks to Damien Brazil, whose family left Donegal. St. John was oftentimes the place many people disembarked from the coffin ships, going ashore. Women whose husbands had died in transit, older people who weren't fit for the journey any longer, women who were about to give birth. Some settled there, more took a second boat down the coast to Portland, Maine, where the harbour that did not freeze provided work year round. These people became known as the Two Boat Irish. The sheep herders who went west, the people who went to the Klondike and north to Alaska, have roots here in Connemara, and we continue to keep the connections alive, not just from Inner Creek and Conway America, but all of the rest of us who are involved in this conference here today. Terry Fitzgerald is a genealogist with Inner Creek and Conway America based in San Diego, and she works tirelessly to document and trace family for anybody who may be interested. The Centre in Carnot provides information on births, deaths and marriages, as well as cultural, language, heritage and many more um, parts of human life that are important for people who are away from these areas to understand. Roger Harrison, working with Ford Connemara and Galway Heritage Office, has documented the townlands of West Galway, which are available on Galway County Council's website. All of this work combines to provide the material required for family finding and ensures that the connections remain in place. Thank you for your time and I hope you enjoy the rest of this event.